All right, I'd like to welcome you guys to this week's video. Uh, as I said last week, I was talking a little bit about spotted bay bass tackle today and also give you guys some insight as to uh, how to start off your own quiver of inshore rods for you know a variety of species. All these rods cross over basically. But uh, before I get into the uh, details here, I want to talk a little bit about uh, custom rods. Um, if you're serious about being an inshore fisherman and you know you aren't on the strictest of budgets, I would highly recommend having some rods built for yourself. I'm not talking about fancy diamond wraps or anything like that. I'm talking about rods that are going to match your dimensions and your body style and everything else. Um, basically, your set of rods is no different than a set of golf clubs that you have fit to your body size and swing type and everything else. You know, and you want to be able to pick up each of those rods and have them feel exactly the same in your hand other than the uh, their application, be it lighter or heavier or anything like that. It doesn't want to be like you pick up one with a different rod handle or a different uh, reel placement or things like that. So, you know, um, I wanted to bring you an example of here what I'm talking about with this. So this is a, a crankbait rod that uh, Bill Batson built for me years ago and it's a great rod and I love it. But the handle's a little too short for me. See, this is uh, one of my normal rods. You can see that handle's about two or three inches longer. That may seem minor, but that's a huge difference. Not only when you're casting, you kind of feel handcuffed with the shorter thing, but also when you have the rod, you're winding, it doesn't fit under your armpit. So basically, that rod might be great for Bill's size or somebody else's size, but for me, I want a rod where the butt goes exactly to my elbow when I have my thumb on the reel. That allows me to tuck this in while I'm fishing, put that ball right in there, very comfortable. Also gives me a bigger stance while I'm casting here. So that's the main reason that you should get custom rods built. There's a myriad of other things you can do. You get colors you like or certain rods that you can't buy in a store, production made or anything like that. But basically all factory rods are made to kind of appeal to the general most guys. You know, so that if you're, you know, let's say you're five foot nine and 150 pounds or whatever weight you would be at that size, you might find that production rods are perfect for you. But if this dimension does not work here with an inshore rod, where this is coming to your elbow, you're gonna not be fishing as effectively as you, as you could be. So they're not that much more if you keep it basic, just do a single wrap, basic guides, real light components, everything like that. You could probably get it for you know just a few dollars more even at the same price as a production rod. It also allows you to pick a bunch of different blanks that you wouldn't have access to uh, if you go the factory rod because they don't carry that many. So anyway, uh, breaking down what, what I'm talking about here, I, you know, I'm going to talk about uh, three basic setups for spotted bay bass and every one of these rods has an application outside of a spotted bay bass fish. And I'm going to start out from the, uh, the lightest to the heaviest, set. not that it's all that heavy. Um, this is my fluke rod. This gets a lot of use in any bay I'm fishing. This is a, a seven foot, two inch, I think, medium action, uh, rain shadow revelation rod. I've got a wrap real simple, single wrap guide, keep, the, keep it light. I've got a Pen Fathom 200 size reel in here. And again, I'm not here to sell you guys a brand of reel or a brand of rod or line or lures or anything like that. I'm just sharing information about what I fish here. So don't, anything you have that matches this is probably okay. So, Pen Fathom 200 reel, and this is full of 10 pound fluorocarbon line. Um, I'm going to get into why that fluorocarbon line is important, but there's two instances in my inshore arsenal where I use 100% fluorocarbon line as opposed to Spectra, and they're both fished on this rod and this reel. In the bay with 10 pound, outside of the bay with 15 pound. But this is a rod that gets a tremendous amount of use. Um, next up is the Spectra version of that same rod. And it's uh, this is a it's turning the 76 mh uh, rain shadow. It's uh, this is a Revo inshore, but same as the Pen Fathom 200 size reel, 30 pound braid. I normally fish this with 20 or 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. This is another light rod, but instead of using it with the fluke style baits that I need the fluorocarbon for, this is for my swim baits, creature baits, anything like that that don't need to sink on a slack line. So. Um, I'll back up a second here. The reason I'm using this fluorocarbon line is the fluorocarbon line sinks and when you have a light bait that you're trying to sink near or piling or something like that, it 
allows the bait to sink straight down as opposed to being drugged back to the boat by the tension of the floating line against it. So, uh, yeah, it's a simple thing, but if you're going to be throwing a little fluke, I'd advise doing it on 10-pound on fluorocarbon. Uh, the last component, the, the one that gets the most use for me 100% in any bay I'm fishing is my crankbait rod. Um, if you're just being into crankbaiting, you know, or you're not too serious about really stepping up and getting a committed setup for it, you can get by with any of the glass crankbait rods that are available. I know Phoenix has them, uh, Fenwick has the Lunker Stick. Um, there's a bunch of different brands. This is a Rain Shadow that's actually the same as the Quantum KVD cranking rods. This is 10 foot, rated 12 to 25 pound test, all glass, real light, real flexible. Great rod, but there's a better option, and that's the, the this larger rod, which is the, also a Rain Shadow. It's the Revelation 98 uh, XH. This is a 10 foot uh, all graphite crankbait rod, which is actually a collapsible rod. You can see the uh, where it doesn't here, but when I build this, I cement it together because I don't need to put it in a rod lock or anything like that. Um, what this rod allows you to do is make a much longer cast, and as you saw in Jimmy's video last week, it allows you to raise or lower your rod tip to change the running depth of your crankbait when you're fishing in the bay. By holding your rod a little higher, you can make it run shallower. By pointing it downwards, you can bring it down and get bottom contact where you wouldn't be able to with an 8-foot rod. And if you missed that, you can look back on episode 3 of uh, uh, my uh, fishing academy. Um, I matched this rod with that same 200 size fathom. I've got 30 pound braid. I actually fish 40 pound fluorocarbon leader on the crankbait. You rarely break them off, you barely snag them off in the bay, but you do rub, rub across pilings and uh, mooring can anchors, chains, and things like that. So I like a little heavier leader. Um, this rod you can't buy in a store, they don't make it production. So you'd have to go to a a local tackle store and have them build you one, and they're surprisingly inexpensive. You know, for the rod that it is, you know, it's uh, you're going to pay the same for this custom build as you would for a you know a high-end Phoenix inshore rod or something like that. And it's uh, it's something you can't find anywhere else. But uh, these are the three setups. All three have applications outside of the harbor as well. And I'll be right back to talk about the uh, the baits we're using on these rods. All right, when it comes to fishing spotted bay bass, you know, there's a a ton of different lures that work and different things like that. But there's, you know, there's, I guess there's basically three different presentations, maybe four, um, that basically cover all your bases. And you know, you're welcome to try a bunch of different stuff. But if you're watching this video and just looking how to take advantage of a, of the bay bass fishing in your local bay or harbor, um, I keep it down to three basic things. And the first of those things is, like I said before, my favorite is, is crankbait fishing. Um, there's a number of good crankbaits that will catch a lot of fish. Uh, when fishing for spotted bay bass, my favorite has always been the uh, Strike King 6XD. Um, in kind of any kind of shad color. Uh, they also make smaller versions of this, which I don't. Uh, there we go. They make a 5XD, and the difference is so if you're fishing somewhere where the water is shallower, you want a little shallower running crankbait. Or if you want a little smaller profile crankbait, they make all kinds of different sizes and, and styles of these baits by a lot of different manufacturers. But uh, if you were just get, gonna get one, I would say the Strike King 6XD and one of these shad colors, think the sexy shad or something. And um, regardless of the crankbait you're fishing, you're gonna go through hooks. I don't know, you can see this one. This is a bait I fish quite a bit here, and the hooks are just garbage. And a lot of times they'll get bent and broken off. Um, so what I tend to do is, I'll fish the stock hooks for until they start to show some signs of wear. And I'll swap out a, an Owner 2X uh, treble hook. You can get this at your local tackle store, Owner Stinger treble. What I'll do is I'll take my hook off the bait or bring the whole bait in and match it up to the size of the hook. You want the same size hook. You can go slightly bigger. But if you get much bigger, you can hook up, your, you get it where your, your hooks tangle. And then that kind of negates your cast. You don't want to go too oversized. And I'd also go with the owner hyperwire split rings that are about the same size as the ones that are on your bait. Um, just if you don't know what to look for, go in and ask at your local tax store. I'm sure they'd be help, happy to help you out. 
My number two favorite crankbait is the Berkeley Dredger. This bait uh, is a 20.5, and they also make a 17.5. 17.5 works great uh, in water up to maybe 12, 13 feet. If you're fishing a deeper, you go to the 20.5. Both of these baits have good stock hooks on them. They all swim straight out of the package, which is really nice. And uh, they come in a variety of colors, but I would, I would stick with these two. This is a blue chartreuse, great color, and a root beer splatterback. These two colors, wherever you're fishing, tend to get bit. Um, they, the brighter one I like in a little bit dirtier water, the root beer splatterback I like in, uh, in uh, clearer water. And both these baits also get bit very well outside of the harbor. Striking 6XD, not so much. It's just a spotty bait as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the last one that I'm going to talk about here, and this is a more expensive bait, is an evergreen CR-16. This is a very specific color that works great sometimes. But um, they make similar colors to the other two. Any kind of shad type color or whatever. These baits work really well, but the hooks suck. They're made for fresh water, so you got to take them off and exchange them before you even start fishing, really. And the split rings need to be upgraded as well. But once you do that, these baits are real producers. Um, but if you're just starting out crankbait fishing, I'd stick to the dredgers. The 17.5 and the 20.5. They make it 25.5, but that's just going to grind your arm off, and you really don't. It's, you'd be amazed at how tiring that bait is to fish. Um, they also make a 10.5, but it's too small. So. One other presentation that I didn't mention before, and this is as far as a, a search bait or a power fishing technique where you're bombing this crankbait out, is a spinner bait. Uh, this is a Blade Runner 5.8 ounce. A, a bunch of different companies make them heavier ones. They make them up to an ounce. Um, that's a great bait to throw on your lighter setup that has a 30 pound specter on it. If you're just you know fishing around more in cans or eelgrass beds, the spinner bait's a good way to go. I'd look at, you know, 5 eighths up to 1 ounce, regardless of the brand, and uh, they make a bunch of different uh, blades and stuff. I like a double willow leaf because it doesn't, as, a, as opposed to Colorado, which is a round uh, blade, as it seems to cut through the water easier and doesn't make a tremendous amount of commotion. It seems to get fit a little bit better. Color doesn't really matter. Uh, chartreuse and white is kind of brownish. Anything like that will get bit. Um, also on that same rod, that's going to be a swim bait rod. And um, my go-to, regardless of the bay I'm fishing in, is this 5-inch VA hose uh, by MC Swimbaits in whatever color you like. This is not a great color for the bay. I couldn't find one. I'd get more of a, a smelty-looking color, like a lighter green back. This is an anchovy color. It'll still work. But um, this bait may seem big for spotted bay bass. I mean, we used to fish Swimbaits this big. But I found they, they'll bite this. I mean, they, they have no, you'll have no problem getting an, even an eight or nine inch fish to bite this bait. Um, there's a lot of different lead heads on the market. Uh, ones with weed guards, ones without weed guards, ones with all kinds of different things. I know Nick from Cast Cranks got out the new Viking head that looks pretty good. But up until this point, I've been fishing this uh, VMC boxer head. This is, I think, a, a half ounce. And what's nice about this lead is it has the, the eye of the hook at, at the top, so it tends to ride over things naturally, as opposed to getting buried underneath them. And um, you get some of these yellow, white, red, whatever, in you know, half ounce, three quarter ounce. If you're fishing San Diego Bay a little deeper, you might go to the one ounce. But you know, just the five inch bait. I'm gonna give you a tip when rigging up any swim bait, to get it the right length on the thing, you start the bait here, and when you ride it over, you push the hook out when you get to the end of the bend with the front of the bait. So you can see I'm pushing this bait over. I'm at the end of the bend here. I pop that bait out the top. I slide it up, and I got a perfectly rigged bait. So that's a little tip for you there. But yeah, you know, these baits, it's just like a spinner bait or crank bait. Bomb it out, slow roll it back. Keep bottom contact with it, then you're gonna be good. The, uh, the last component of this is the fluke, which Jimmy also talked about last week. I use Zoom flukes. I'm in no way affiliated with them. I have trouble finding them sometimes in the colors and sizes I like. But they make a uh, standard fluke, and they make a super fluke. They make some really big ones, too. The difference is the super fluke is a little bit bigger body, and it's a little bit longer, maybe an inch longer. The standard fluke I find for spotted bay bass outfish is the super fluke in most cases. Um, 
I'll rig this on an owner ball head, round type head. Uh, this is a 3 16 I'll use up to a quarter ounce on this. Uh, I think in the video Jimmy said 3 8 but that was uh, incorrect. And uh, this zoom fluke, it rigs just like a swim bait. And you remember it goes to where the, the bend of the hook stops. Small baits, you have to be careful getting on straight. But once you get to that point, you push out the top. And you got another perfectly rigged bait right there. And that's fishing on a 10 pound fluorocarbon line. Pitch it on the piling or make a long cast in the eelgrass and pop it out of there. And um, fish will bite that all the time. So, you know, it's basically three baits, four if you include the spinner bait. But, you know, instead of trying to go buy the, a bunch of different baits that may or may not work, just pick one and fish until you catch fish. I mean, I'd start out with a crankbait. Crank, crank, crank. When you start getting bit and you're confident in your ability to catch them with a crankbait, go to a swimbait or go to a spinnerbait or a fluke and just try each of those applications until you got it. And then once you got it, you may say, hey, you know, maybe I want to try this bigger fluke or I want to try uh, a different style of swimbait or a different crankbait. But until you figure out how each of these baits works, um, it's kind of pointless to just try different things and just, you know, shoot with a shotgun. You need to with all this stuff I'm going to talk about here in this whole series, it's come down to choosing a bait and figuring out how to fish it. So that's about it uh, for this week. I might actually do a fishing report next week. I'm not sure, but uh, whatever the case, I hope you have a great weekend and uh, hope you get out fishing.